Well, we want to welcome you into the auditorium here at Victory Baptist Church. And the words of that song we were just listening to, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." And at these days of uncertainty in our country and in our, uh, our area here, we want to be able to make sure we put our trust in Jesus. As uh, the pastor of the church here, I was trying to think of all the different ways that I could potentially be a blessing and an encouragement to our church family. And so I decided to pull out the saxophone. Haven't had this out for a little while. And I wanted to play one verse of a hymn for you this morning. Uh, before we go to the Lord in prayer and we start our service. And the title of this hymn is a very well-known one. It's I Must Tell Jesus. And what an encouragement again at this time in our world that we tell Jesus our concerns, tell Jesus our problems, and he'll be there to hear us, he'll be there to answer us. So I'm going to play just one verse of I Must Tell Jesus. <laughs> for his own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to turn to the Lord Jesus and we're going to pray to begin our service here this morning. And I trust that you'll be able to watch this video here on Sunday, March 29th and to be able to be encouraged by it. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer to start our service out. One special prayer request I would like to mention here this morning on our video. I want you to be in prayer, and I know our church family is very familiar with this situation. I want you to be in prayer for Miss Bonnie Groff's mother. Uh, we found out that Miss Bonnie Groff's mother is in the hospital, and they're running some tests, and she's already having a lot of problems with her health. And uh, now they're running some tests there in the hospital. And so that's one of our special prayer requests that we're going to remember this morning. And I trust that our church family would remember uh, Miss Bonnie Groff's uh, mother in prayer in uh, the days ahead. And we'll try to keep you updated on that. But we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And that's going to be one of our prayer requests that we ask this morning from the Lord. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to use this avenue of technology to be able to have a service right here in our auditorium. And I know that the building is empty before me and uh, there's uh, no one that is in the auditorium right now watching the service. But Lord, we understand and we know that the church is not the building, but the church are the people that are represented uh, by that church. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we uh, can still be able to attend a church service with a video and be able to still uh, take time to uh, bring our request to you, and we pray that you would be with Miss Bonnie Groff's mother in the days ahead as she's in the hospital and going through some tests. I pray that you'd give the doctors wisdom, 
and others, Lord, that uh, may uh, be sick, uh, Lord, because of the sickness that is uh, in uh, our area and in our world right now, this virus, and I pray that you would help each one in the situations that each one is going through right now, and uh, for folks that are home, I pray that you would help to encourage us while we're away from church, uh, be able to uh, strengthen us from your word each day, and be able to use again this avenue that technology has allowed us to use here to be able to have even our services at home there uh, by way of a video. And we pray that you bless this service now, speak to our hearts from your word as we open it up, and help it to be an encouragement to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, thank you for tuning in today. I'm going to take my Bible from the very start here, and I'm going to open up to Psalm 46 and give you just a moment there in your home to open up to Psalm 46 so that you'll have the opportunity to go ahead and read along with me as we read through Psalm 46. And while I've been putting forth these videos, I've been trying to take some scripture passages that would encourage us in the day that we live in uh, with the uh, problems that are, we are facing right now that would help us to rely upon the Lord, put our trust and our confidence in Him. And so we're going to read Psalm 46 and allow the words from the psalmist here to comfort and encourage our heart. It says this in verse 1 of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, she shall not be moved, God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh war to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, the bow, excuse me, and cutteth the spear and sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Now listen to verse number 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Aren't you glad that God is a God that we can turn to in times like this? Again, I tried to encourage, I've been trying to encourage our church family that in the midst of a situation like this, that we would be able to take uh, our, the real peace that we have in the Lord and our genuine faith and be able to take that and show it before a world that is in the midst of fear and in the midst of worry and in the midst of anxiety that we would be able to help them to understand that God is our refuge and we can be still and know that He is God and He's going to be there to help us and He's going to be there to take care of us. So in the midst of uncertainty, let's learn to trust the Lord and put our hope and our strength in Him. And we can be a light in this area uh, as we uh, seek the Lord in this day that we live in today. Well, remember Psalm 46 and the words of it. Now, I have some good news for our church family. We are not able to have our missions conference this week, but we have several videos that we are going to be able to watch and throughout this service, you're going to be able to watch two different videos throughout this service time. And I'm going to bring it right up there onto your screen so that you can watch it. And again, be able to use some technology. I had to do some work to try to figure out how to do this. But I think I have it figured out so that we can allow these videos to uh, come right there on the screen so that you can watch them in the midst of this video. And so right now, we're going to take a break from our video here. And we're going to watch a testimony video that Brother Issachar Mang has for us. Now, Brother Issachar Mang is from Myanmar, and he is one of the missionaries, the national pastors that was going to be here for our missions conference. It was supposed to start this day, Sunday, March 29th, and it was supposed to go to the first day of, of April, April 1st, Wednesday night. 
But of course, because of the executive orders, we are not going to be able to have that right here into our building. But we're thankful that we can still preach some messages about missions and giving to missions. And we're also thankful that we can still have opportunity to hear testimony from these men. So this first video is going to be a testimony from Brother Issachar Meng, who is uh, one of the national pastors there in Myanmar. And we're going to hear his video at this time. So we're going to take a break from this video here and be able to hear the salvation testimony and the testimony of the life of Issachar Meng in Myanmar. Hello, this is Brother Issachar. I just want to share a short testimony of mine and the ministry that I am involving in. I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Savior when I was young, when I was eight years old. My mother was the one who shared with me, and my mother was also my first Sunday school teacher. So basically, I heard the gospel in my home. I'm very grateful for that. Not only that, my mom and dad, ever since I was in the womb, they dedicated my life to serve the Almighty God. So after I finished my high school, I went to Bible college in Myanmar, which my father is a founder and president. So I studied there for two years. On the first year, in my heart, the Lord called me to preach the gospel especially to the unreached people group, people who never heard the gospel, people who never heard the name of Jesus. So together with my three friends, all in all, we're four, we started, I started and founded a group called Soldiers of Jesus Christ. We take that from Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldiers of Jesus Christ. So in my heart, really, I want to go to a place where people never heard the gospel. On that summer, after I finished my first year of Bible college, we went to a place called B. It is a very strong Buddhist place. And when I went there, I saw children on the street laying under the tree. It was about 20 children. And I started asking them and talked to them and taught them about Jesus Christ. They have never heard Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. At first, when I asked them if they knew Jesus or Yeshu, and they said, oh, we never know Yeshu. Maybe he is from another district or another village. There are many places in Myanmar, people who never heard the gospel, even the name of Jesus. That breaks our hearts. In that area, together with my three soldier friends, we were able to start five Sunday school places five Sunday school group. We thank the Lord for that. Not only that we continue on going to different villages, I still recall a place called Pakanya village. It's a Buddhist village. Every place is full of idolatry, full of idols worship. We went there for one night and we asked them we want to preach the good news. The Din Gong. Good news means the Din Gong. And they said okay. And then they made a stake, and then behind the stake was uh, an, a big idol, three big idols standing. And in front of them, here we, the young soldiers of Jesus Christ, preaching to the 400 Burmese Buddhist people sitting on the sand. I still recall the, that night. And we stand there and preach, and after that we divided group into uh, four groups, and I got about 50 people. And as I shared to them the gospel, and these people, they listened attentively, and a woman, and man, and this is what they said. Oh, nobody came and told us, why is it that you only come this time? That breaks our heart. The soldiers of Jesus Christ group, we were four back then, but right now the Lord added more young people, and we are now 31. Not only that God increased our ministry, not only we have the, the outreach group but we also right now planted eight different churches and we are also teaching children in the street in different places we pray that the lord will continue to use the soldiers of christ ministry and we pray that these young people who are in the soldiers of christ as they go to different places to reach the unreached people group and plant churches in different places we really need prayer support and financial support Please continue to pray for us. We thank the Lord for this ministry. And I want to see Myanmar, 96% are still Buddhist. 
and out of 4% other religions such as Muslim and such as even in Christianity it included a uh, Roman Catholic and seven days and the real born again are very few oh before the Lord Jesus Christ come I pray that many more people will be reached out and many more churches will be planted we pray and please continue to pray for us thank you very much God bless you all right I trust that video was a blessing to you was an encouragement to you to be able to see the things that God is doing there in Myanmar uh, through his servant uh, Issachar Maine and again another reason why we are so grateful that we can give to the Lord to be able to help these missionaries continue to do the work that they're doing well a couple of announcements here really quickly the uh, things that we want to make sure we keep people aware of. We're not going to be able to have our missions conference this week. Again, it was supposed to start today. It was supposed to go through this Wednesday coming up. We're not going to be able to have our missions conference. But we are still planning on having a video for our children. We had a video this past week for our children. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, if the children haven't had a chance to watch it, it is up on our website on the home page. And you'll see on the top of it, it says Children's Service. And we had one for last Wednesday. We're planning on doing one again this Wednesday. We have something very special we're going to do in this one. So hopefully our children will be able to attend and to watch the things that we're doing. Something very special. Don't want to tell what it is yet, but hopefully you'll have a chance to watch that. And we will have that on the homepage of our website at 5 p.m. this Wednesday, Wednesday, April 1st. And we also will have on our website at 7 p.m. this Wednesday, April 1st, we're going to have... A video of our Wednesday evening uh, service. Now that Wednesday evening service will be a little bit different than we typically do on Wednesday evening because we're going to be able to have a we're going to have a missions theme for that night. It's going to include a couple more videos from our missionaries, videos that you do not want to miss. We have a couple more that we're going to show you on Wednesday night and just a mission thought from the Bible as well. And so it'll be a little bit different than normal because this week was supposed to be our missions conference. And so I want to have a mission theme for our church folks uh, during this week. And so that'll be on Wednesday night and we'll have it up on our website at seven o'clock. So tune in for the five o'clock Wednesday night for our children. And then at seven o'clock on uh, Sun, or excuse me, on Wednesday night for our adult service as well. And the missionary videos that will have a missionary themed Wednesday night service. And then also, most of you may know this already, but on Tuesday of this week, which would be March 31st, uh, we will be at the end of the 15-day uh, time in which our president has asked us to kind of stay home and, and, and to kind of keep ourselves away from crowds. And I, I understand that on that day, or maybe the following days, we're supposed to be able to get an update as to uh, what direction uh, we need to go for the days ahead. And so we'll be uh, tuned in for that and try to keep you updated here at uh, our church. And the way that you can uh, keep yourself updated, uh, the things that we have going on at our church, there's a couple different avenues that you can use. You can use our website. That's probably the best place to go to because we have a tab across the top that would let you know if we have any cancellations. It also has a slide on the homepage you can click on and go through a whole bunch of information on that. I've been trying to keep that updated. The homepage of our website is also where we have our videos displayed there, so you can look at those as well. Then you can also keep updated on our Facebook. That's facebook.com backslash Victory Baptist Maryland. And you can also call the church and let it ring through to the answering system, and I've been trying to keep that updated as well. But as of right now, another announcement is all of our activities and our outreaches are canceled, and, or at least we should say postponed, I guess, until further notice. When we are able to get back to the church here, I hope we can get our feet hitting the ground running and be able to do as much as we can for the Lord when we're able to come back. Now, if you have any needs, or maybe you have any prayer requests, maybe you have some questions that you would like to ask, please either call me, send me a text message, or email me. And myself and my wife are going to try to help you as much as we can during this time, try to be a blessing to you and a help to you. Uh, I know that uh, we're uh, not able, obviously, to meet, but hopefully we can still be an encouragement to you if you have some needs. And then some folks have asked me about the devotional booklet that we normally give out at the beginning of every month. As of this video on Sunday here, March 29th, those devotionals have not arrived in the mailbox at the church yet. So we're going to keep you updated uh, with that uh, through our videos here. But if you would like to 
uh, arrange a, a time for you to pick up a copy of that and you want to let me know that you want to be on that list of folks to contact when they get here, please let me know. As of right now, uh, quite a few folks have reached out to me and said, please let me know when those arrive and we'll arrange a time for you to uh, be able to pick up that devotional booklet if you would like one of those and I'll let you know when they're available. And then also our giving, a couple different ways that you can give if you'd like to continue your giving to the church whether it be your tithes, whether it be your faith promise, other offerings you would like to give, uh, a couple different ways that you can do that. On the home page of our website, there is a giving tab. You can click on the word give, and it will take you to a secure place where you can give securely online. You also can be able to mail your, you can mail your offering in as well if you'd like at our address, our church address, 8014 Old National Pike, Boonesboro, Maryland, and that's 21713. Or you can also drop your offering off here at the church. If you would do this for me, if you would please call me or contact me if you would like to drop your offering off at the church, and I will give you a designated time when I would be able to meet you here at the church to be able to drop that offering off or at least make sure someone is here to be able to meet you so that you can drop your offering off. And that's the way we'll do that. Now, real quickly, let's look at our monthly verse that we're trying to memorize. This is the last Sunday that we would meet in the month of March. And so I hope you have this verse down by now. But it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse number 6. And the Bible says this. It says, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And that's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6. Hopefully you have that now committed to memory. Well, we're going to pause our service here one more time for an opportunity to see another missions video. Now this video that we're going to show you now is going to be about the ministry of of uh, Brother Timothy May, his ministry there in Myanmar. And of course, Timothy May is uh, the other national pastor that was supposed to be with us here uh, during our missions conference this week. And we obviously understand that we cannot do that uh, here in our building. And they have already, already made their way to work to try to get back to their country uh, because of uh, the situation here in our country with services being canceled and so forth. But we will be able to have this video. So we're going to show you a video right now of Brother Timothy Mang and his ministry there in Myanmar. And I hope this will be a blessing to you while you're able to watch it.
video was a blessing to you. I hope it was an encouragement to you to be able to see the work that Brother Timothy is doing there in Myanmar, another missionary that we support by our giving, and we're so thankful for him. Well, I tried to bring, I know we can't have live or, or singing here in the church right now, but I tried to bring some music into the service here today with the uh, music that we've already been able to hear. But I want to real quickly read the words to a hymn. And I know this would be an encouragement to you at this time. The uh, words to great is thy faithfulness. And think about the words to this. It says, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy and love, pardon for sin and a peace that endureth, thy own dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with 10,000 beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Aren't you thankful for the faithfulness of our God and the fact that he was faithful yesterday, he'll be faithful today, and he'll be faithful tomorrow. Now, I know tomorrow is uncertain. I know that we don't know what tomorrow holds. But aren't you thankful we are able to know and trust and serve the one who does? And we can take comfort in that. Well, throughout the month of March, we have been preaching some messages about missions. We uh, centered our thought the last few service times on our faith, promise, missions, giving, and what the Apostle Paul has to say in the book of 2 Corinthians about faith, promise, mission, giving. And so with, would you join me with your Bible now in 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. And I want us to real quickly review the things that we have already heard in the services that we had here in our building uh, before we were uh, under these executive orders. And then also the service that we had last Sunday, which reminded us of a few things here from 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Now, the first thing we wanted to remind you of today was that, uh, that definition that we had been giving about a faith promise offering. And we said this about faith promise giving. It's a very simple Bible plan for financing worldwide evangelization. And just by way of review, we said that any church could do it no matter what size they are. We said any individual could do it, no matter what their income was. We said that we have to see the need of worldwide evangelization, and then we have to get to a place where we commit something financially of all our tithes and our offerings for the purpose of worldwide evangelization. And then we said that this kind of giving was a grace. We called it the grace of giving. And we said the grace giving meant that we have a realization in our hearts that we have been given much, and because of what we have been given, we now want to take that heart of thanksgiving and respond by giving ourselves uh, based upon what God has given to us and what he has done for us. And then we said that the churches in the region of Macedonia were an example to us of faith promise giving. And Paul was writing here in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 to try to urge the church of Corinth to give an offering outside of their church to be able to be a blessing to worldwide evangelization. And we told you how that the region of Macedonia set an example for us in a couple different ways. We'll review that really quickly. We said, number one, they gave us an example by their participation, the way they participated. The Bible says they were able to give in spite of their poverty, and they were able to give in spite of affliction. They were able to still have joy and still give in spite of affliction, and they were able to still give. It didn't affect their giving, even though they were in deep poverty, the Bible says. And then also we learned that their pattern was an example to us. And their pattern was they gave to their power, or the word power we said meant ability, or they gave what they had, and then they gave beyond their power or beyond their ability. 
Uh, they were even able to give above and beyond what they had. Now that's where we told you faith comes in. And trusting God to be able to meet the need and to be able to provide for us what we need to be able to give to Faith Promise Missions. And then we said their purpose was an example to us. What was their purpose? Well, the purpose of a Faith Promise offering, Faith Promise giving, is to get the gospel out. Just like we just heard from Brother Issachar, just like we heard from Brother May, uh, Brother Issachar May and Brother Timothy May, the need that is there in Myanmar and how we can give for the purpose of being able to get the gospel out to folks that still have not heard the truth of God's word. So that's the purpose that they had as an example to us. And then the prerequisite as an example to us. And what would, did we say the prerequisite was? That they would give of themselves first, and then after they gave of themselves, their treasure would just fall right in line. It's that, not that God needs our money, it's that he needs our heart, and when he has our heart, our treasure will come right along with our heart as we've given that to the Lord. And so have you surrendered your life to the Lord? Have you given your life to the Lord for the purpose of God using it? So then after we saw the region of Macedonia and the churches within that region as an example of faith promise giving, then we gave Paul, Paul gave some exhortations, some exhortations to the church of Corinth. And we reviewed, the, or we went over these last week, but let's review them. In verse number six of 2 Corinthians chapter number eight, we told you that Titus was exhorting the church of Corinth to give. And then when we got down to verse number seven, we said that he commended their positive graces. He said to the church of Corinth, there's a lot of things you can do very well, but he wanted to exhort them to abound in the grace of giving as well. And then when you get down to verse number eight of 2 Corinthians chapter number eight, you probably have it open there in your Bible. He exhorted them to prove their love for the Lord and prove their love for the lost by having an attitude of willingness. And uh, this is what we learned from verse number eight that this faith promise offering was not a command, but it was something he wanted them to just willingly, voluntarily, as a free will offering, give. So he didn't command them to do it, but he wanted them to be out there. He wanted them to have a willingness in their heart. And then we saw the last exhortation, the last exhorting from Paul in last week in verse number nine, where Paul exhorts them with the greatest example or the greatest motivation of giving that we could ever have, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ, that even though he was rich, yet for my sake, for your sake, he became poor, that through his poverty, I might be rich. I was a sinner, and yet Jesus took that sin upon himself. I, I was, was poor, and yet Jesus gave me his riches. And aren't we thankful for the gift that Jesus Christ gave to us? And there might be somebody here, even before we get into the thought of the message for today, that does not know Christ as their Savior. Maybe you've never been made or been given that, that righteousness of Jesus Christ that he wants to give to the poor lost sinner. And you say, I've never come to know Christ as my Savior. Today, even watching this video could be the day of your salvation. It could be the day when God speaks to your heart and lets you realize, acknowledge, uh, it lets, allows you to acknowledge the fact that you're a sinner and you would confess your sin and you would believe in what Jesus Christ did for us that we can very clearly see there from verse number nine that he was rich but became poor. He was righteous but yet took sin upon him so that we could have salvation when he died on the cross for us and you would call on Jesus and ask him to be your savior. And maybe perhaps there's someone even that's listening right now to the video and God is speaking to your heart and you would like to trust Christ as your Savior even right now. Never, there's never a bad time to trust Christ as your Savior. And you can do it right now, even in the midst of watching this video of God is speaking to your heart. But the greatest example of giving that we could ever have was when Jesus Christ gave to us. But then we get to the third part of 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. We've seen the example of the churches in the region of Macedonia We've seen the exhortations, the exhorting that Paul gives for the church of Corinth. And now we're going to see some advice that Paul gives. Now, we would do well to, and we would be very wise, to take the advice of a godly man. We would do well to do that. We'd be a very wise individual to do that. And we would say Paul was a godly man who, give us, who gives us some godly advice in these verses. And there's only two verses that we're going to look at today. 
to let us see the advice that Paul gives. First of all, we're going to look at verse number 10, and we're going to continue on in verse number 11. And those are the two verses that we're going to look at in this, in this passage that we opened up to as our text here. Now, there will be some other verses that we open up to as the message goes on here, but let's look at Paul's advice here in verse number 10 and verse number 11. The Bible says in verse 10, he says, And herein I give my advice. Now, again, we would do well. We would be wise Christians to take the advice from a godly man. And Paul is going to give us some advice. He says this, For this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago, he says. Now, notice what it says in verse number 11. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which ye have. Here's what Paul does. Paul gives some advice to the church of Corinth, and he urges them to take part in this offering. And here's what he's saying to them. He's saying, I want you to do what you had promised a year ago that you were going to do. You had promised that you would do it a year ago, but yet Paul says you still haven't performed it. So he's saying don't just commit to something and not come through. You know what? That would be a good application for all of us as Christians, even far beyond even missions and our missions given. That we would not commit to something and not fulfill what we have committed to the Lord that we would do. We would, we would, we would commit but not perform. And that's what Paul's saying. He's saying a year ago you committed to this, but you haven't fulfilled your duty yet. You haven't performed what you said you were going to do. Now, sometimes I understand the fact that decisions and commitments that we can make can be based upon emotion. They can be based upon maybe in the midst of sitting in a service like this and hearing the preaching of God's word and, 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 and having a, a, a feeling of an emotion in our heart that kind of stirs up and we say, man, I really want to give to missions because I watched the videos there and I saw the needs that were there from the national pastors there in Myanmar. And I realize what I need to do for the Lord and a decision or a commitment really can be based upon emotion. But let us go far past emotion and let us make sure that we base this commitment, this faith promise gift that God wants to use us to give and we base it upon prayer number one and we base it upon trusting in what God can supply for us to be able to give. Now, one of the things that we've been doing in our family, especially uh, right now when we've uh, been able to spend some time at home together, uh, one of the things that we always do as a family is to have our devotion time, our family worship time together. But it has been very special lately because of the fact that we really can't meet together with our church family. So we're kind of meeting together there at our home with our family. And one of the things that we've been spending a lot of time on lately is just praying and asking God what he would have our family to do when it comes to worldwide evangelization. So it starts with prayer. It's not just an emotion, but it's saying, God, I want to commit something to you. I, 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 want, to, I, want, to, I want to give you a promise. And when I give you that promise, I'm going to pray about it. I'm going to seek you about it. But then when you tell me exactly what you would have for me to give, I'm going to trust you to be able to supply I'm going to be able to trust you to be able to meet the need. I'm going to be able to trust you, Lord, to be able to help me to fulfill my commitment, to be able to fulfill my promise that I've given to you. Just like when we meet back at church here, we have these cards that we would like to give out to folks. And these cards are going to be our faith promise commitment. Now, not, not that necessarily uh, uh, we're, 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 we're looking for some kind of a magical number. No, we're, we're just trying to find out what folks would be able to commit to give to missions so that we would be able to know what we as a church could do for the work of missions. And so when we get back to church and we're able to pass out these cards, it says on here, in dependence upon God. There it is, trusting God. I have purposed in my heart, I've made a promise to God to give to world evangelization through this, evangelism, excuse me, through this local church, the following amount. And it says on here, I understand this, this is a faith commitment between me and God, 
I'm not going to be asked for it. I'm not going to be billed for it. Again, mainly the purpose is to be able to find out what our church would be able to do when it comes to world evangelization, what we could do. If we could take on some more missionaries or if we could do some more work when it comes to missions giving. And so we make that commitment to the Lord, not based upon just emotion, but praying and asking the Lord what He would want us to give. Trusting that whatever amount He puts on our heart and we fill out on that card and we promise to give and we commit to give, that God is going to enable us to be able to give it. And then we perform that which we have promised. And that's what Paul is advising them to do. He's advising them. He's urging them. Hey, give in this offering. Perform that which you have promised to do. Now, why is it so important for us to give in this offering? Why is it so important for us to take the advice that Paul gives to us? Why is this advice that he gives us so important? Well, notice what the Bible says in verse number 10 again. It says, and herein I give my advice, for this is, now notice what he says, expedient for you. This is expedient for you. Paul gives the answer there. Why is this advice that Paul gives so important? He said, it's expedient for you. Now we've got to stress the word. It's expedient for you. Paul is saying as a missionary, I'm not saying that this is expedient for me. Now the gift would be ultimately given to Paul and other missionaries that would be collected there at the church of Corinth. But he said, it's not me that I'm advising you to give this for. That It's not expedient for me as a missionary, but it's expedient for the church and those who are giving within the church. Now, it is a very serious mistake if we consider faith promise giving to be primarily for the benefit of the missionary. Here's what Paul is trying to encourage us. It's the giver who profits from the giving. Now, the missionary, of course, is going to be able to get the blessing of being able to receive the money and it's going to enable him to continue to do the work that God has called him to do. But the profit and the blessing really comes to the giver, the person who gave the offering. That's the one that Paul advises. He, he, that's the advice that he gives. It's expedient for you. It's going to be a blessing to you. It's going to be to your profit to give. Now, I want you to hold your place there in 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. And I want us to take ourselves to Philippians chapter number four, because Paul is going to encourage us here in Philippians chapter number four to help us to realize who this offering is expedient or who it benefits or profits. Notice what it says in Philippians chapter four and verse number 17. It says, not because I desire a gift. This is Paul speaking here to the church of Philippi. He said, it's not that I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So again, Paul is reiterating here to the church of Philippi or in the book of Philippians. He's reiterating the fact that this is expedient for you. It's to your profit. It's not necessarily that I just want the gift, although it's going to enable Paul to continue to do the work, as we already said. But he said, it's not just that. It's the fact that I want fruit to abound to your account. So here's what I want us to see today. I want us to notice that this offering that we give to the Lord is expedient for our church. It's a good thing for our church. It's going to be a profit. It's going to be a blessing. It's going to be a benefit to our church if we give in this offering. Now remember what Paul is saying there in 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse number 10? He said, I'm urging you to give this offering to perform the promise that you have made. And if you will, it's going to be expedient for you. And I want us to notice two different ways in which this offering is expedient. But number one, I want us to center firstly now on it being expedient for the church. Now, today, could I ask us to concentrate on our mind how it would be expedient for this particular church, for Victory Baptist Church. How would the church benefit 
by an offering for world missions. I want to draw your attention in this message to three different ways that a church could benefit as a result of an offering for world missions. Number one, I want to draw your mind to three thoughts. Number one, because it will provide a means for our church to obey the Great Commission. It will provide a means for our church to obey the Great Commission. Now, remember what the Great Commission said. And we realize the Great Commission is given in all of the Gospels and in the book of Acts, which, by the way, we're going to get to in just a moment in the book of Acts. But remember what it says, Go ye into all the world. Go ye into all the world. But when we read that verse, we would say, well, it seems like it would be impossible for one church to be able to do that. For one church, especially maybe a church, if you would think about it, in a church our size, that we would have one church, a little tiny local church here, that would be able to go into all the world. You say, that seems like an impossibility. But can I say this about our God? God doesn't change his word just because we have a problem. Just because we may look and say, it seems like an impossibility. That's a problem there. That we're to go into all the world, but we're just a little tiny church here in the city of Boonesboro, in the county of Washington, in the state of Maryland. How could we possibly go into all the world? Well, just because we have a problem, it doesn't mean we change God's word. Instead, we must find a way to obey. We must find a way to obey. And we can rejoice when God is able to call a missionary to do the work that God has called them to do and enable that missionary to do it, maybe even to go to a place in a far corner of the world for us. It's for our benefit. It's for our blessing when God calls a missionary. He calls them. He enables them maybe to go to a place far away from where our church is here, and we should rejoice in that. And then there's another step. We don't just rejoice in God's calling and enabling upon an individual to be a missionary, but we also rejoice in the fact that we can give to that missionary. We can be able to provide a financial support for that missionary so that they can go to a far corner of the world again for us and reach God or reach others with the good news of the gospel. So we would say this, number one, how is this expedient to us as a church? How is this expedient for Victory Baptist Church that we give a faith promise missions offering? Because it enables us to obey the Great Commission, to have a part in obeying the Great Commission. We're trying to do it here in our city, in the area we live in, to obey the Great Commission, but we can go into all the world and obey the Great Commission that way when God calls missionaries and we're able to give to missionaries and support them to do that work. And then number two, not only does it enable us to obey the Great Commission, but it also develops an unselfishness in our church. It develops an unselfishness in our church. Would you look really quickly to the book of Acts? Acts chapter number 20, and we're going to look at verse number 35. Acts chapter 20 and verse number 35. So number one, we saw that it is expedient for us as a church to give an offering because number one, it will enable us to obey the Great Commission. But number two, it helps to develop in our church an unselfishness. Notice what the Bible says in Acts chapter 20 and verse number 35. It says, I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, now listen to this, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It's more blessed to give than to receive. You say, well, the, the receiving part benefits me. The giving part benefits somebody else. That's where we would say giving would to develop in us an unselfishness in our church because it's not about us, it's about others. So in our hearts, we would say that we don't want to selfishly hold on to what we could unselfishly give. We don't want to selfishly hold on to what we could unselfishly give for the cause of Christ. 
Now, here's where I want to go to the book of Acts. I told you I was going to get to the book of Acts in just a minute, the great commission there that's mentioned in the book of Acts. Look with me, if you would, at Acts chapter number 1. Back to Acts chapter 1. I know we were in Acts chapter 20 there. Back to Acts chapter 1. And we're going to look at the commission that God gives in verse number 8. That great commission to go and to spread the word of God to all. Not just in your own city, but to all the world. And here is the great commission of the church of Jerusalem. So the Lord is commissioning the church of Jerusalem to go out and to spread the word, not just in your city here, Jerusalem. Now we understand he starts off with that and he says to reach your city, but don't just stop there. Go into all the world. And so notice what he says here in verse number one to the church of Jerusalem. He says, but ye shall receive power. Now we understand that as being the power that the Holy Spirit is going to give us. His presence is going to be there. His power is going to be there as we give out the gospel and as we fulfill the great commission. And he says, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Now notice what he says, both in Jerusalem, that's the city there where they're at, the church of, of Jerusalem there, and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, the church of Jerusalem has now been commissioned. They're to take out the good news of the gospel in the city they live in, and the county, and then the state, and then the country, and then the entire world, out of the uttermost part of the world. And when they received this commission, right before Jesus ascended into heaven, he's speaking these things, and behold, he was taken up by a cloud and received out of their sight. They're to go do this work now that he has commissioned them to do. And immediately when they receive this commission, they are excited and serious about winning the laws. But you know, if you go on a little further in the book of Acts, you know that after two years have passed, they are still there in the city of Jerusalem. Two years have now passed and they've reached inside the city of Jerusalem but they haven't reached outside of their city. Now we understand that prejudice, of course, prevented them from reaching out to Samaria because they wouldn't have any dealings with the Samaritans. But remember the commission that God had given to them before he went back to heaven. Jesus said to them, you're to reach Jerusalem. You're to reach Judea and Samaria. And you're to reach the outermost part of the world. But again, the prejudice of the area of Samaria had caused them from reaching out to that area and into the uttermost part of the world as well. So two years now have passed. The church of Jerusalem is still sitting there in the city of Jerusalem. Here's what happened. They took their eyes off the world and they were only looking really in their area at one another. That's where a faith promise offering is expedient for us as a church. We take our eyes off of just the Boonesboro area. Now, we want to reach Boonesboro. We want to reach this county and this city and, and, this, and this state with, with, with the gospel. But it's taking our eyes off of just this area and saying, I want to look out into the world, into the uttermost part of the world, and be able to evangelize that area as well. Well, when you go on in the book of Acts, you get to Acts chapter number 5. And we notice that... In Acts chapter number 5, some hypocrites start appearing. And you turn to Acts chapter number 6, and you notice some murmuring to, begins to develop. And so now you're starting to see a pattern. They're sitting there in the city of Jerusalem. They haven't gone out into Samaria. They haven't gone out into the uttermost part of the world. And some hypocrites start appearing. Some murmuring starts developing. And then in Acts chapter number 7, God shakes it all up, doesn't he? The Bible tells us there's a man named Stephen who is stoned to death and persecution is set by God for the purpose of driving some of those Christians out of their own city to give the gospel outside of Jerusalem. And when you get to chapter number 7 there, you see the persecution that starts to arise, how they're driven out of Jerusalem, and you know the gospel is taken to Samaria Remember, if we get to Acts chapter number uh, 8, you start to read the story of Philip. Remember Philip and how the gospel spreads outside of Jerusalem. Even uh, again, the story at the end of Acts chapter number 8, where he meets that Ethiopian eunuch there and gives out the gospel to him. And the gospel is spread to Samaria as well. Remember an area that they at first didn't want to go into because of the prejudice that was there. 
And we notice that when they get to the Samaria, they start to spread the gospel. It becomes very successful. They're spreading the gospel in a very successful way. And then eventually, the gospel is spread to Antioch. And when it spreads to Antioch, they found hearts of the Gentiles were open to receive the gospel. And so here's what they realized. The same thing that we need to realize today. That we need to reach past our area. Out from our area. And into the world. We must not lose our worldwide vision and become a selfish church. Not just reaching our own area, but reaching outside of our area. Now, again, I know the needs of the church need to be met as well. I understand all that. But above and beyond that, the needs of a world needs to be met with the gospel. And so that's why we would say this giving is expedient for the church. Why is it expedient? Expedient. Because it gives us, uh, it provides for us an opportunity to obey the Great Commission. And then number two, it develops in us a heart where we are not, uh, we're not selfish as a church. A heart uh, of being an unselfish church. And then number three, can I give you one more reason why it is expedient for us as a church to give a faith promise gift? And I trust that you're already praying and asking God what he would have you to do for missions. This is why it's expedient for us as a church to do it. Number three, because it will guarantee that the needs of our church will be provided. It will guarantee that the needs of our church will be provided. God will supply the needs of the local church if we are a local church that decides to be mission-minded. Here's what we have to do. Here, here's here's, the, here's the, uh, the, the, the successful statement that we would make. We do our part when it comes to missions, and we believe God. We do our part when it comes to missions, and we just trust God. We just believe God that he would supply the needs of our church. Now, this is where we're going to go back to the book of Philippians and finish with just a few verses there in Philippians chapter 4 to bring our message to a close. Philippians chapter 4, and notice what the Bible says, we'll start in verse number 14. Philippians chapter 4, verse 14. Now remember again now, Paul is writing to the church of uh, the church of Philippi there, and he is writing this book to them, and he is praising them for, excuse me, their heart of giving, that they would be willing to give uh, to uh, his work and his ministry. And so let's break down a couple of these verses. Let's look at verse number 14. It says, notwithstanding... Ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. That word communicate there has the idea to share, to share. He said, you've done well to communicate. They had been contributing to Paul and his material needs while he preached the gospel and while he was planting churches. So Paul is preaching the gospel. Paul is planting churches. And the church of Philippi there was meeting his needs materially. He said, you've done a good job in communicating or sharing with my material needs so that I could continue to preach God's word and continue to be able to plant churches. That's exactly what we want to do for our missionaries around the world. That's exactly what we want to do for these national pastors in Myanmar. We want to be able to help them to continue to give out the gospel, continue to be able to see God use them to start of ministries and, and churches there where they're at. And we can be able to give to them and communicate or share in their burden by giving to meet their material needs. And then he says in verse number 15, look at this one. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. Paul says, out of all the churches that I have planted, only this church has a burden to support my missionary ministry. This is the only church that has a burden like they ought to, to be able to give of the work, to, to have a burden to give of the work so that I can continue my missionary ministry. Then he says in verse number 16, for even in Thessalonica, he sent once and again unto my necessity. He's reminding us of their regular and their consistent support. Remember, Paul was planting that church in Thessalonica, and they were sending 
gifts while Paul was doing that so he could continue to work, continue to plant the church. And so he's given us a wonderful picture of the regular and their consistent giving and their consistent support. And then let's look at verse 17 and verse number 18. He says this, not because I desire a gift. Remember, we already read this one. But I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Look at verse 18. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of a sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Notice what is said about their offering here. Notice the description of their offering. When they give of their offering, when we give of our offering, it's a sweet smell to our God. Now, it doesn't literally mean we put the offering, uh, offering envelope into the plate or take our offering and drop it into the plate and all of a sudden we smell a sweet odor. But no, it's a sweet smell to God. And it's a well-pleasing gift to God. It's one of the ways that we can say to God, I love you, God. It's a way for us to say to Him, I love you, and, 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 and be able to know that it's an offering that's acceptable to Him. It's well-pleasing to our God, and it causes a sweet smell in, in, in the nostrils of God, it says. And then look at what verse number 9 says, because this is the promise that we're going to get to. Notice verse number, I'm sorry, verse number 19, it says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. He said God will supply all of your need. He says he gives a great promise. Now, we understand that this is written to a local church now. And we also understand that the only local church that would be able to claim this promise that God gives is the local church that is the kind of church that he describes here. The only local church that would be able to uh, rely upon this promise that God gives here, I'm going to supply all your needs is a local church that's the kind of church that's described here in this passage. A church that is able to put missions first when it comes to its giving. When it's able to provide for its missionaries that are going around the world and preaching the gospel and planting churches. And again, we're giving that offering by faith. And we're trusting that God is going to be able to provide that offering for us so that we can make that promise, make that commitment to Him, and He'll be able to give through us to get that work done. So while this month has been going on, while we were here in the building, and when we're outside of the building with these videos that we've been using, I've been asking you this question. What is it that God is prompting in your heart to do for missions? Now we understand there are a couple different things we can do for missions. We understand that we can pray for missionaries. I hope that you actively Pray for missionaries. We can also uh, be able to give to missions, as we've been talking about this month. We can take these faith promise missions commitments and give to the Lord so that the work of God can be done. Uh, we can certainly be willing to go and be the missionary that God wants us to be if he is speaking to our heart. Maybe just to be uh, a local missionary in the area where God has you right now to give out the gospel and to say, I want to commit to doing that as a full-time job for the Lord, to be the missionary that God wants me to be. If, he'll, if, if he calls you and he prompts you in that way, maybe outside of our area, you say, God is calling me. God wants to use me in another area, outside of my area. Just be willing to, to, to uh, have a surrendered heart to say, I'll do it if that's what you'd have for me to do. But then maybe, perhaps, there's an individual that would say, you know, I could even encourage missionaries. I could do my part in even encouraging missionaries. Uh, like our church has done in the past where we've taken mission trips to try to encourage missionaries. But certainly that you would search your heart and say, what is it that God would have for me to do? What is it that God wants me to do when it comes to missions? Remember at the very beginning of the month of March, if you were in our services, we preached the message about what is it that's in your hand? What is it that you can take that God has given to you in your hand and you could use to be a blessing and to be an encouragement when it comes to missions, worldwide evangelization? And I'm going to ask you that question again as this month kind of draws to an end. And we didn't get to have our missions conference but we're excited that we can still preach about missions. We can still think about missions and what God, again, would have our church to do. Can you, just as we close this video, can you concentrate on what we said missions giving would be 
as far as expedient to our church, we would have a part in, in taking the Great Commission to the, uh, in, in obeying the Great Commission and taking the gospel around the world. We want that, don't we? As a church, we want to take the gospel around the world. We would be able to practice uh, not to be a selfish church, uh, but to be a, a church that was that was uh, not 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 selfish in the way that, that we uh, that we uh, acted here in, in, in our church. That we would be a, a church that's not selfish. It would help us to learn that as we give to missions. And then also as we finish today, we talked about how that we can be the kind of church where we can guarantee that God's going to provide and supply the needs of our church here if we'll be willing to give to missions. And so I ask you, if God prompts in your heart there while you're sitting watching this video, what it is that he would have for you to do with missions, I hope that you'll respond to that call. Now, a little earlier in the message, I thought about or I brought up the fact that there might be somebody that's hearing the message and has never trusted Christ as their Savior. And if that's you today and you've never asked Jesus to be your Savior, I hope when this video comes to an end that you'll just bow your head and your heart there before the Lord. You'll acknowledge and confess the fact that you're a sinner. You'll in your heart ask God for forgiveness for your sin. You'll believe that he died for you and was buried and he rose again. And you'll ask him to be your Savior, trusting him by faith to do something for you that you cannot do for yourself. If you have questions about that, please reach out to our ministry here. Our website, again, is victorybaptistmd.com, and we can try to help you in any way that we can. Reach out to us through our webpage there and our contact link that's on our webpage, and we can try to be a help to you. We're going to finish uh, this service in prayer, and as I'm finishing in prayer, maybe you can right there where you're at watching this video uh, speak to the Lord about what way it is that He has spoken to you about what He would have for you to do when it comes to missions. And I'll close in prayer, and right there in your seat, maybe you can pray and talk to the Lord as well. And again, share with Him uh, what he, He'd have, uh, share with Him uh, the uh, response that you'll give as He's prompted in your heart there. Father, we thank You for this opportunity to use technology this way to reach out into the homes of the families of our church. And I realize we're living in uncertain days, I realize we're living in days of which we don't know from day to day really what's going to happen next. We really are even uncertain as to when we'll be able to meet together here as a church family in our building. But Lord, again, we're thankful that we can still be able to hear the preaching of God's Word. And I pray that today, the challenge that we've given from God's Word here, the advice that Paul gives to us from the church of Corinth, that it has prompted our heart to make a decision when it comes to missions. When we're able to get back here to our church, we're going to encourage people to make a commitment, to make a promise to the Lord as to what they would give for the work of worldwide evangelization. And I pray that you'd be speaking to our hearts about that. Lord, if you'd have someone to surrender to go and do a mission work outside of maybe even our area here, and you're speaking to their heart, Lord, help them to be willing to go and do what you would have for them to do. Lord, pray that we be faithful to pray for our missionaries as well. But Lord, speak to our hearts with whatever it is that you would have for us to do when it comes to missions. And then we pray, Lord, as we close, that if there's someone that has never trusted Christ as their Savior, that today would be the day of their salvation. If you're speaking to their heart while they're watching this video, help them to acknowledge their sin. Help them to believe in what Jesus did for them on Calvary when he was rich and he became poor for us that through his poverty we might be rich. We were given his righteousness and he took on that sin for us so that we could have salvation. And I pray that if you're speaking to somebody's heart, that they would even bow right there at their seat where they're at and be able to trust you as their savior and let our ministry know about that. We would certainly be encouraged by that. So use this video to be an encouragement to our church family and help us to trust you until we're able to meet together as a church family here in our building. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this will bring our service to an end, and we trust that you'll be able to tune back in on Wednesday. We're going to have the children's service and then also the adult service, which we will have a missions theme that night for our adult service as well. So God bless you, and thank you for watching the video.